Let me read to you a passage from the 11th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 42 to 46. It's the Gospel for Wednesday of the 28th week of Ordinary Time. St. Luke writes, Jesus said, Woe to you, Pharisees, because you give God a tenth of your mint, rue, and all other kinds of garden herbs, but you neglect justice and the love of God. You should have practiced the latter without leaving the former undone. Woe to you, Pharisees, because you love the most important seats in the synagogue and greetings in the marketplaces. Woe to you, because you are like unmarked graves, which men walk over without knowing it. One of the experts in the law answered him, Teacher, when you say these things, you insult us also. Jesus replied, And you experts in the law, woe to you, because you load people down with burdens they can hardly carry, and you yourselves will not lift a finger to help them. That's from Luke chapter 11, verses 42 to 46. Among other things, it speaks of self-importance. You know, I have de never delved seriously into the history of empirical psychology as a discipline. But it is clear that over the last several decades, the theme of self-esteem has attained a considerable prominence. Self-esteem is a term used in psychology to indicate a person's appraisal of his or her own worth. It includes beliefs about oneself such as, I am competent in this or that, or I am no good at the job I am doing, and also various emotions such as despair, shame, satisfaction or triumph. Importantly, such statements as, I am a bad person and I feel bad about myself in general, ring alarm bells in the mind of the psychologist. Such a person's self-esteem is low and that is deemed not to be good. In popular discourse, self-esteem refers to how much you value yourself and how important you think you and your accomplishments are. Now it is obvious that this is a fairly fundamental matter in life, in the life and happiness of the human being. Anything has a certain objective importance simply because it exists. Being has value. In the case of the animal, self-esteem will not be an issue because, strictly speaking, there is no consciousness of self. In the animal, a dog is conscious of many things, including the friendliness of its own master or fellow animals, but is not conscious of itself. That is to say, it has no power of strict self-awareness, which would imply a spiritual self, and so there is no capacity to be aware of its own value. Self-esteem is not an issue, but human beings are aware of themselves as distinct entities and so possess an innate self-sense of personal value for the simple reason that they are aware that they exist. That which exists has value. Further, the human being senses what is the manifest fact, namely that he is of far greater importance than many other things around him and of equal importance, in a certain sense, to other human beings. Hence it is to be expected that the human being will have a degree of self-esteem and will expect that his value as a human being will be acknowledged by others. If this is lacking, it is a disorder and he will feel it. The next plain fact is that all too often this is not acknowledged. Many will regard him as of little value. So self-esteem has been an important issue for every individual since the dawn of human history. The trouble is that fallen man tends not only to deny to others the esteem that is their due, he also seeks for himself the esteem of others to a degree entirely disproportionate to his merits and in ways that are disordered. As a matter of fact, this sort of thing began in heaven long before the human race appeared. Splendid and lustrous angels 
worthy of the highest esteem because of their endowments received from the Creator, wished to be esteemed with the honour due to God. I will not serve, was their cry. Creatures, though they knew themselves to be entirely dependent on the ongoing creative act of God, they nevertheless demanded a position equal to that of God. Their self-esteem was monstrously willful, and it was their terrible undoing. And thus Lucifer, the bearer of light, became Satan, the prince of darkness. At the dawn of history, he was found to be in the garden tempting the woman with his characteristic temptation to be a god like the one god. The crash was terrible, and it left human nature in the sorry state with which we are so familiar. Our self-esteem has been derailed, and we tend to grasp for it in overwhelming abundance, and are in constant unhappiness at the portion of it we are served. Self-esteem is indeed a fundamental matter in human flourishing, but the question is, what are its true sources? The most objective esteem we enjoy is not that which we have for ourselves, nor that which comes from our fellow human beings. It is the esteem which God has for us, for us whom he sustains out of love. The fact is that we are nothing, absolutely nothing without him, and all that we are and have in any positive sense is his gift. We are living proofs of his divine esteem for us, and our self-esteem ought to be derived from the fact of his love for us. It is a love that creates, redeems and sanctifies us. On our part, what can we show but daily infidelities? But the answer to this is to make constant acts of humility and trust in the love of God which is his pure gift. Our self-esteem is based in him, not in ourselves. No matter how poor we are in ourselves, the rock of our self-esteem lies in God and his love. In our Gospel passage today, our Lord castigates the Pharisees for making themselves the object of esteem rather than God. Woe to you Pharisees, because you love the most important seats in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplaces. Luke chapter 11, verse 42 to 46. They were creatures of self-importance. Our Lord said elsewhere that we ought come to him and learn from him, for he is meek and humble of heart and we shall find rest for our souls. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 to 30. We are to choose the lowly place as our best place before God. More precisely, we are to seek to live in the truth. In this case, the truth of ourselves. We are creatures of God, and He is the source of all.